hope you guys are doing good and welcome back into content meta if you are new to our channel and subscribe to our content please make it official hit that sub button leave a like and annihilate that notification bell hold on now just wait if you haven't seen this week's episode there will be spoilers from here on out this week's episode left a lot to unpack starting out with the referential film nor style as lmd field circuits are just coming back online leaving us to experience the events of this story in the black and white spectrum now these circumstances which have continued from last week places us smack in the middle of a murder mystery which as it stands in shield history is the mystery around Sousa's murder. Again, real quick, I would hate to spoil your Agent Carter experience. So skip ahead before I tell you, an anonymous figure is seen taking out shield agents at the end of season two of Agent Carter. Now the one symbol that ties both Hydra and shield together is the same one seen on the dossier which Agent Jack Thompson had in his possession and was later taken after being killed. So from the beginning, season seven is already tying up those dangly plot threads left untied from other Marvel properties. Okay, so after some minor digging, I found out that the title of this entry shares its name with a 1947 classic in the same genre involving Robert Mitchum playing as, you guessed it, a private eye. It is still to this day considered to be one of the benchmark films in noir cinema. And while this shield entry doesn't feature a femme fatale per se, we are still treated to that old narration murder mystery case set in 1955. So, with all of that established, as we continue on in the past present, Coulson is trying to convince Sousa to get the package in question to Howard Stark in LA, but in doing so, must convince Sousa that he's now the contact to link up with in order to get said package. But there's one slight problem. Coulson doesn't have it yet. It would seem that Time and our team have finally caught up with Enoch, who has been laying low as a bartender of all things, in a local shield safe house. It is quite obvious that after a 25 year wait, Enoch is more than ready to continue on adventuring with his friends, but is instead relegated to being an operator more than once in this episode. As much as this is being played for fun, judging from the trailer for next week's entry, he'll be able to stretch those atrophied adventuring muscles soon enough. Now, in order for Coulson to deliver the package to Sousa, Yo-Yo and Deke are sent to acquire it to later rendezvous with Coulson. They know it's in the briefcase in the home of a scientist, but before they can retrieve it, what they don't know is that an old acquaintance seeks possession of it as well, and not to mention the Chromacons too. Which leads Deke to getting kidnapped or decnapped or yeah, while Yo-Yo, who is still unable to slingshot, fortunately ends up with the briefcase after all. This event is noteworthy. Wilford coming into the light from the shadows is impactful. Malik is now seasoned, imposing, and is at the peak of his powers. It is unmistakable. And even though Daisy would have rather have had Deke take the shot to save countless lives because Deke chose not to, he is therefore reimbursed for his own act of mercy. In the hopes that Coulson can meet up with the team, in order to deliver the gizmo to Sousa, both men board a train to LA, the same place that would lead to Sousa's untimely demise. Again, really quickly, I wanted to point out the parallels or inspirations of this episode by the show writers paying an evident homage to Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. Now while the plot of the former noir film without spoiling too much involves two strangers who meet and eventually entertain the idea of murdering the other significance other in a murder swap, this episode loosely echoes this by having two separate unaffiliated parties trying to stop both Sousa and Coulson, even leading to one of the Chromacons to proposition Phil hoping to connect with him on an LMD non-biological entity level. His request is for Phil to give up Earth willfully and that the loss of life will be minimized and if he refuses, Sousa will die ahead of schedule. Of course Phil refuses, but I wonder if this overconfidence may lead to the Chromacons becoming a real threat. Now after S.H.I.E.L.D. finally catches up with Coulson and intervenes on the attempt on Sousa's life, they all eventually aboard the Zephyr. Here's where we learn a truth that has been up to this point known to future S.H.I.E.L.D. but is groundbreaking information in Sousa's present. In that Wilford Malick, who is stated to be Sousa's superior, is actually a Hydra agent. Now, we finally are beginning to get some answers on why May, of all people, 
have been undergoing such a strange array of emotions. Ever since the beginning of the season, and more importantly since the last episode, it goes without saying, May has not been her usual self. Now, if you've been watching since the last season, we saw May get stabbed and thrown into Izel's dimension, which is the only reason why she survived such a severe wound in the first place. It seems that the laws of physics are drastically different there, including the ability to feel in a human way. I see you discover life and death are meaningless in this realm. Which is why we find it so curious that you cling to one and dread the other. Now, my initial assessment was that May hadn't yet processed her feelings, but in a nice twist, she's actually being overwhelmed by the emotions of others through touch. Can't wait to see how this new ability will be used or if there are any malignant side effects lurking underneath. In keeping with the team's habits as of late, they cleverly pull off a sleight of hand on the history books, allowing the public at large to believe that Sousa had indeed met his fate on that fateful night at the Roosevelt Hotel, but they choose to save him, yet letting the memory of his sacrifice be an inspiration to S.H.I.E.L.D., much like Coulson was the catalyst or the push the Avengers needed to put in the end of Loki's schemes. I was very curious to see how Sousa would become a part of the time-traveling band of S.H.I.E.L.D., and now I'm very intrigued to see where or with who Sousa would end up with in the end. Well, that just about does it. Stay tuned in the content meta for next week's episode as we break down the most important aspects of the show. And until then, see you then.